to tell you, but there are a whole lot of sneakers out there. I mean, a lot. If we were to count them all, there would probably be hundreds of thousands of different brands and 1,000 times the amount of actual pairs. Even if we decided not to include the more wonky brands you find at Walmart or Alibaba and only look at the few brands that actually make good pairs, well, there are still thousands of models that are worth looking at. But if we take a peek at sneaker news, you'd quickly realize that people only really care for the same few pairs. Everyone's obsessed with the exact same stuff and keep talking about the new releases of the same old models. You were certainly made aware of all the new Dunk or Jordan colorways that came out recently, but you probably never heard about things like the Air Max Bliss, which is a brand new pair that came out just a few months ago. We ain't talking about some unknown brand here. It's one of the newest models of the biggest sneaker brand and absolutely Absolutely no one gave a fuck. That got me thinking. In reality, could the problem just be us becoming brainwashed? Or is it just that 99% of sneakers are plain trash compared to the 1% of sneakers that we all love? It's probably a bit of both, but we gotta try figuring out why these pairs, who tend to sell pretty well to the public, look pretty clean and are far from shameful to wear, but just don't attract sneakerheads at all. Just a few years ago, things weren't the same, and even if the reasons for that seem obvious, we did a bit of old digging, asked you the big question on our Insta, and the answer's a bit more complicated than you think. And there's evidence of it. Hello what? there. Ooh, ooh. Hello. New vid today, and we're gonna talk about those sneakers that have been completely out of the equation for a while, but that deserve some respect. These pairs in the sneaker world, they're called GRs, General Release. They're the pairs you find all the time at your typical shoe store, like Nike Blazers, Adidas Forums, Air Maxis, and every single pair of Pumas. On paper, a pair that was produced over 300,000 times would already be considered a GR. Certain Jordans and Dunks should be General Release like the dark mochas that were manufactured over 400,000 times. The dunk pandas also fit in that category since they made millions of them. Unfortunately, when you see these pairs being completely sold out, having to be sold with raffles and being 4x the price on the resale market, you quickly realize that the concept of GRs doesn't really have a correlation with how many were produced, but more about how many are stocked on shelves. I'm sure you got that, but if we talk about GRs in this video, it's more about pairs that collect dust on the shelves and don't get sold for days. Therefore, they're not going to be rare and don't have any value on resales. And that's probably the biggest issue that sneakerheads have with them. But to really get the stakes of these pairs, we of course have to give some context once again. General releases are the lifestyle sneakers that are meant to rack up the most bread to brands. They make a ton of them and they need to be very efficient in producing them. That means the pairs need to satisfy the maximum amount of consumers to be distributed in the most stores possible and have the biggest chance of being sold. They also rely on the fact that these pairs cost very little money to be made. The pair that best describes this whole thing is the Cox Sportive T1000s and their different colorways that are actually just the same exact white piece on 80% of it, but they very subtly differ on the different colorways. For example, on the same production line, we'd have the same blank canvas, all white, and we'd add some blue details on the pairs that are meant to be that color. Same thing for the red ones. You get the drill? This way of making a bunch of old products using the same base is found in a whole bunch of other industries and models. And you know, having the same white leather on 10 colorways makes it so there's bigger economies of scale than, for example, what we did with the air heats that need needed us to develop a different leather every time to adapt to every colorway. The concepts of GRs in itself is to satisfy the masses, and that's why the most popular pairs are almost always the same color, all black or all white. When in the most hype releases were offered extravagant colors and shapes on GRs, they're privileged minimum and less flashy pairs. But again, it depends on what's currently trending. Think back seven years ago, I might bring back some bad memories, but back then, the hype wasn't crazy on exclusive pairs. Most of them were general releases. The Nike Roju Run, the Flyknit Racers, or even the Adidas ZX Flux were really colorful pairs, available everywhere.
everywhere and totally valid to the sneakerhead, but also the average Joe. In today's world, it's not the case at all. The sneakerheads turn their backs on GRs and even the general public wants a pair of pandas, or at least that's the impression that we could have. But not to be biased on what we could see constantly on all sneaker medias, we decided to just ask you guys the question directly. We quickly realized that in reality, it's not that bad. It's more like a 50-50. A lot of people decided to completely snob the GRs and only get interested in the more hyped up pairs, or maybe the pairs that smaller brands are putting out. The other half decided to still be hyped up by the less flashy pairs. Although when we worded the question differently by asking do you still find interesting pairs in regular sneaker stores, it quickly dropped to less than 30%. Wow, man. Uh... Damn. After seeing the results, I thought that maybe the problem with GRs was just the selection of sneakers that are put on shelves, just to get a taste of what's available from the retailers. Cause I'm not gonna lie, I also completely ditched them a while ago. I went on most of the biggest European retailers' websites for a while, not for hours on end either though. And frankly, I had mixed feelings about what I found. What I saw was the rise of absolute crappy shoe brands like Tommy Hilfiger, Ralph Lauren, Lacoste, or even cock sportive. It had been a while since I checked out what Foot Locker had to offer, at least half a decade, and I definitely don't remember them having such muffins in stock. This is ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. There's also quite few pairs of AF1s that are literal sabotage, an enormous amount of all white and black pairs. But in beyond all the trash, I saw some pairs that are actually pretty damn good. Obviously, none are gonna be as worked out as the off-white Jordan 4s, for example example. But they're also not your classic GR that you can see on everyone's feet. For instance, I found this pair of Adidas forums with a cream sole, faded colors on the three bands, a raw cut deal around the ankles, added stitching sprinkled around to add onto the deconstructed look. And even if we're not looking at the pair of the century, the product in itself is actually interesting. There's a whole concept that's being researched pretty well, and to be fair, is definitely worth looking at. Not even looking at pairs with modified pieces and all. There's a buttload of pairs that stay on the quiet side but have efficient color blocking and honestly it gets us thinking what's the problem with GRs? Well that's convenient because we also asked you guys that on Insta. The answer that came back the most often for the boycott is obviously the lack of exclusivity. Rocking the same pair as everybody else isn't the dream for most people. The second reason according to you guys is that they're missing out on creativity whether that is on the materials or the colors. And the third reason is just simply that the quality of the GRs are apparently much worse than the more limited products. And in reality, we can't act like it's not. The most hyped pairs are miles ahead of what the brands offer. But beyond the products themselves, what they offer beyond that is much better. You usually find a GR by mistake in a random store or online shop and you buy it. No one talked to you about it before. There's no Insta pages talking about the new GR releases because absolutely no one cares. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you. <laughs> After you bought your GR, you're probably happy with it, but it remains a pretty anecdotal purchase. But for the really hype pairs, it's a big event that you've been anticipating for weeks. And there's a whole process that goes from creating the desire to get the pair all the way to pulling the trigger for the lucky ones. Because for the most anticipated pairs, you'll find a whole luck base game, which brings a whole new level of dopamine that makes people go crazy. Go crazy. Go stupid! Ah! To buy or to try buying hyped up pairs is a pretty annoying but addictive experience. They're pairs that are much better and get much more hype than the GRs. These pairs also bring good resale value even when worn. You add that to the psychological aspect that we already brought up in this video, you can imagine why people have eyes on those pairs, me included. So are GRs worthless? Of course not. If you take out 90% of the absolute jump pairs that are made to be sold massively and make money, you're still left with a solid 10% of good pairs that are worth checking out. You just need to know what shops to go to or just to know directly what models are worth the money. About that, we present a bunch of those on our Insta in the cop or drop stories we post. Some GRs are so well done that they end up being sold out instantly. We're thinking of the protection pack, but if I were to be honest, I see GRs as the pair you begin your sneaker adventure with before getting to the brainwashed state of the sneaker community. And for me, that's officially part of the sneaker craze 
crackhead community that's been completely ravaged. It's more than the disappointing pairs that I completely failed to appreciate, and now I don't even see myself spending five bucks on a pair of superstars, Adidas forums, or Air Max 95s. But I'm completely down to drop a pretty penny on the superstar bootleg from Stone Cold Studio on some Prada forums or even Kama Des Garcons Air Maxes. I could tell you how I find those to just be made better than the classic versions, but it's probably deeper than that. Maybe it's also the idea of finding stuff that not everybody knows about. Anyways, now that you know more about GRs, it's your turn to tell me if they're pairs that you boycott or if you're actually a total fan of those pairs to this day. Smoking on the weed, I got a challenge. 